<laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. What were the questions for love? Well, My morning. Yeah. Uh, shoot, just uh, woke up, uh, went to the gym, did some arms. Uh, no, about recover. And that's it, you know. This is my life. I love working out. I love recovering. I love football. So, no better thing than to wake up and do what you love to do. How, how much momentum do you think you guys can, can now get because you won the game? How, how much more relief? I mean, does the pressure come off now? Can you guys kind of play even better? Than yeah. Um, and it's because not only that we won the game, but Again, at one point it was 28 to zero. So I think now y'all even see this team went toe to toe with Ohio State. It was a good team, well coached team, uh, beat some good opponents, played great football early on in the season. And at one point it was 28 to zero. So to say that, that's the biggest, that's honestly why I took, all, took um, out of that game is that we are that type of team we got that's our standard, you know what I mean? We could do that to opponents and we could do that to quality opponents. So it did take away, take a, the pressure away, but anything showed us that we could be a dominant team this year and um, other games to come. How do you guys keep focused this week, you know, knowing that it's going to be a step down in competition, maybe from a Big Ten opponent mm -hmm. that you guys have faced the last several weeks? Well, you got to focus on um, what you got to fix in your game. Again, every game, we didn't play a perfect game, and that's encouraging at that. Um, so even defensively, what we could fix, how we could get better, alignment, assignment, execution, uh, little fundamentals, uh, uh, and that's what you got to worry about. You got to worry about improving your game. Everyone, all of us, have to worry about improving our game and getting ready for um, Ohio State. But we got to finish this team first. But you got to understand that this is a great opportunity to improve your game this week. When the offense jumps out to those big leads, I mean, how much more confidence can that give you guys knowing that, hey, our offense got us the lead and we just kind of play loose? Um, we, we all contribute to the lead. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's uh, the offense score. We stop their offense. The offense score. We stopped their offense, the offense score, stopped the offense. So we, we both of the offense and defense contributed to that lead. So like I said, 28 to zero is a combination of us having three and outs and our offense scoring with the opportunities they had. And that's, that's just encouraging. It's us doing our job, it's them doing their job. And um, it's just, it's a good feeling. And then kind of on the flip side of that, when they got back into it, made it 28, 22, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you not think about what happened at Northwestern and the last how do you move on from that focus in the moment? Well, it was Coach Vocal point of the of the week. He said, let's let that never happen again. Uh, Northwestern game was not supposed to end like it did, and we let that happen. And so we, I think in everyone's mind, I know in my mind, I was like, okay, yeah, this stops now. You know, uh, telling the guys that I know everyone was thinking the same thing. It stops now. Uh, we got turned around. And we did, uh, you know, a couple key plays. Eric made a key play on kickoff. Um, Dedrick got the interception, a lot of stuff, a lot of combination of good plays um, that, that help us, you know, um, put it back to a four score game. So it's, um, that's, that's the thing. We just thought about it was Coach Frost's vocal point of the week. And I think everyone thought that even after that last touchdown, and then we was like, yeah, it stops now. And that's what happened. How about, your, how about that moment for Dedrick? And, uh, and you think he's a quiet guy. He doesn't talk to us much. Uh, so how would you describe his personality and who he is? Dedrick is not quiet. I mean, he might be quiet to y'all, but he's not a quiet guy. Oh, he's just, uh, I mean, he's to himself. Yeah, um, even when it takes him a moment to warm up to others. But for him to get that pick for the linebacker room, and even because it was like a tip drill, we do the tip drill every day, and you know, you know, tip drill, and then he put his whole entire body on it, uh, and it was it was crazy. I mean, like I celebrated with him under the pile, 
I was beating his chest, you know, all that, just hype with him. And uh, I'm happy for him to get his first career interception. So that was good. That was good for the team. It was a touchback. Um, and it was good for him. And I'm just happy that he got that. You, you guys came in at the same time, right? Like, yeah. In the, the same recruiting class. And he played right away. Yeah. You had a red shirt year. So you guys have had a little bit different trajectories. But you kind of ended up on the team, both as starters now. Mm -hmm. what, is, what has that experience been like, kind of walking through that with him? He's kind of played all the way through, and mm. you've kind of had, had a different trajectory. I've always looked at Dedrick as, a, a, I would say, a role model in that. Um, even though we are in the same grade, he again, he started as a true freshman. I did it. Um, of course, as a competitor, that's something that I, I wanted to do. And But I seen, um, I always ask, okay, why he got that? And I seen the little things he did. And um, I model my game. I, I'm, I model how I approach things, just like him. He's a very professional guy, um, and that's something I really respect. He's uh, accountable, he's disciplined, and he knows what he, everything that he needs to know and more. So he's, as a friend, I, you know, you having a friend like that, having a teammate like that, you look up to them and uh, you, you want to you copy their game and they copy your game and you just uh, get better. So he's a person that has made me better as a player and as a person and um, I'm, thankful, I'm thankful for him. Well, being from Atlanta, are you familiar at all with Bethune Cookman and, and you know where to locate him? Do the guys on the team know? Uh, uh, no, nah, I don't. Uh, 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 yeah, I don't know. Somewhere in Florida, yeah. But I mean, again, that's another football opponent, so I'm ready for them. On the run? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it just, like I said, when I was up here in front of y'all last week, I said and with Minnesota stopping the run was the biggest thing for me. I wanted to stop the run. I came in there. Um, uh, my goal was to be uh, dominant versus the run. And I wanted our team to, because of last year, because that was embarrassing. Um, so for them to, I don't know what the Russian stat was, but I think it was under 100. Um, so for them to have that uh, is, you know, it just goes to show that everything we preached during the week, um, we came out and we executed and we got it done. So it's just Northwestern, this game, I just, I just think uh, our run defense just improved just because uh, we're doing better in our fits. We're detailing our work, our footwork. We're not overrunning gaps and we're playing inside out of everything. Oh yeah, before he was injured, he was, he was very physical at, at safety, probably our most physical safety during fall camp, and uh, a lot of players could attest to that. Uh, I think he was very physical, so I think um, uh, he's a perfect fit at, fit at outside linebacker, and of course, you know, he has great instincts, and uh, he could cover, so uh, the biggest thing is getting dirty with the linemen. That's going to be a big adjustment for anyone, so... Uh, he works on that. He's going to be a good fit at that position. Anything else from Mel? Thank you. Uh.